Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT Geek YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dan, as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to another Microsoft SC200 Security Operations Analyst Exam Topic Series. Um, so this is uh, the, the final episode in Learning Path 2, which is all around uh, Microsoft Defender 365, um, specifically the Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. Um, so we've had some really interesting you know, topics around sort of Defender for Endpoint, uh, the environment, how to deploy it, sort of security enhancements, different ways to perform device investigations. Um, so we've got a couple more topics we want to cover um, and do another demo before we are done with this learning path and we'll move on to learning path three. So let's get started with this episode. So I get my socials, they're all in the description as well, so make sure you do give me a follow. Make sure you subscribe as well. Um, so, so far we've, we've obviously covered uh, these topics already. Um, in the last episode, we covered performing actions on a device and then forming evidence and entity investigations. So this episode, we are going to move on to configuring and managing uh, automation. We're then going to talk about configuring uh, alerts and detections. Then we'll talk about utilizing threat and vulnerability management and then move on to a demo of uh, blocking an at-risk device with Microsoft Intune. So, first topic we're going to talk about is configuring and managing automation. Um, so let's talk about managing automation, upload and folder settings. Um, so first of all, enabling the file content analysis capability um, it allows us to, to that capability so that certain files and email attachments can automatically be uploaded to the cloud for additional sort of inspection or main investigations. Enabling the sort of memory content analysis capability um if you know you can do that if you if you'd like microsoft defender for endpoint to automatically investigate sort of memory content for processes uh, and when this is enabled memory content might be uploaded to microsoft defender for endpoint during that sort of automated investigation process We've then got the sort of automation folder exclu exclusions and now this allows you to sort of uh, specify folders that the automated investigation will, will skip so it will investigate them you can control the, the sort of uh, you know you can control attributes like uh, folder extensions of files and file names with this one with the sort of aut automation folder ex exclusions so let's talk about blocking an at-risk device in microsoft intune so the first thing you do is you turn on microsoft intune connection from the microsoft easy Find defender portal then go to turning on the defender for endpoint investigations in endpoint manager we can then create the compliance policy in endpoint manager we then assign a policy and then create the Azure AD conditional access policy. So we're going through these steps in the, in the demo later on. Let's now talk about configuring uh, for alerts and detections. So we'll talk about some of the advanced features. Um, uh, so Microsoft Identity Integration, for example. This retrieves and rich user and device data from Microsoft Defender for Identity and forwards that to Microsoft Defender for endpoint signals. They have sort of the Office 365 Threat Intelligence connection. So this connects Office 365 Threat Intelligence to enable the sort of security investigations across Office 365 mailboxes and Windows devices. We then have the sort of Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps. Um, this forwards Microsoft Defender for Endpoint signals to Defender for Cloud Apps. Uh, and it gives administrators a deeper sort of visibility into the sort of um, both sanctioned Cloud Apps and Shadow IT, which is very important. Shadow IT is not important, but being able to know when that's going on so you can mitigate it and stop it is important. Uh, sort of the Microsoft um, uh, Intune connection. So this connects Microsoft Intune to enable sharing of device information and sort of that enhanced policy enforcement. Final thing is that Microsoft Secure Score, as far as the advanced features go. And this follows Microsoft Defender for Endpoint signals, giving Microsoft Secure Score visibility into that device security posture. Let's talk about managing alert suppression. So you can create suppression rules for specific alerts known to be innocuous, um, such as sort of known sort of uh, known tools or processes in your organisation. You can also use the, you know the examples in, in this table um, to help you choose that context of suppression. So look at the context. We've got suppress alerts on the device. Definition of that is obviously the alerts with the same alert tile and on that specified device only with only only be suppressed. And all the other alerts on that device will not be suppressed. 
Some example scenarios are when a security researcher investigating a malicious script that has been used to attack other devices in your organization, or another example is a developer regularly creating PowerShell scripts for their team. The second context is to press alerts in, in your organization. Definition, this is alerts, alerts with the same alert title on any device will be suppressed. Example of that is a, a benign administrative sort of tool is used by everyone in your organization. Let's talk about managing alert indicators. Um, indicator of compromise or IOC uh, matching is a lot of an essential feature in every endpoint protection solution and this is no different. Uh, the capability gives SecOps the ability to set a list of detection indicators and you know, for blocking and prevention response. So if you look at the sort of um, indicator of compromise type on the left hand side of the table, we've got files, for example, and the available actions are to allow audit block or remediate. Same with IP addresses, you can allow audit block execution. URLs and domains, you can allow audit block execution. And you can do the same with certificates. Oh, sorry, you can block, allow, allow block and remediate with certificates. Let's talk about utilizing Microsoft Defender for vulnerability management. Um, so when we're trying to explain this, you know, Microsoft Defender for management uses built-in and agentless scanners to continuously monitor and detect risk in your organization, uh, you know, even when devices aren't actually connected to that corporate network. So this is a little diagram again of Microsoft Learn, it kind of shows the capabilities of the auto discovery and inventory, that vulnerability and configuration assessment the risk-based intelligent protection and then we've got the remediation uh, on the right hand side as well and that will integrate sort of APIs and investigations. Let's talk about exploring vulnerabilities on your device. Um, so this is like the sort of, in this table you can see the sort of things in the sort of vulnerability management pane. So you've got you know the area dashboard, recommendations, remediations, inventories, weaknesses, event timeline and baseline assessments. In the middle, you can see all the descriptions, but I'd recommend going into the vulnerability management navigation, and having a look at all these as well. So let's look at now time to go into the portal and do our demos. Let's move across. Welcome back. Here we are in the Microsoft Defender, uh, Microsoft 365 Defender portal, and we're going to do that integration with Intune now. Um, so the first thing is we need to go to um, settings. Uh, and on endpoints, we need to go to, or we're on advanced features, which is good. And there is an option right down towards the bottom. Uh, keep on going, keep on going. Microsoft Intune Connections. So first I want to turn this to being on. Um, and save those preferences. Now, once we've done that, we can then go to the, um, so we're in Intune now. So we're in Microsoft Intune Admin Center. Go to Endpoint Security. Uh, we're going to go down to Microsoft Render for Endpoint. And then we need to find the option. So the connection status is available. However, there's an option somewhere to open the Microsoft Render for Endpoint uh, Admin Center, which we do from here. So this opens the, the actual portal we're already in before. So we've done that connection, here's where we can manage it all. So it turns, it takes us back to Microsoft Defender for Defend Endpoint. And then we can manage all those um, sort of compliance policies. We can go to the MDM compliance policy settings. Back here. Uh, we can look at attack surface reduction. Um, and we can configure sort of the, the Windows devices. So let's, um, on here, let's do these different, so we're going to see all these integrations at the moment are turned off. We can turn these on. Um, so to use a Defender for Endpoint with compliance policies, we need to configure um, the MDM compliance policy settings for the, the platform that we support. So ours will be uh, connecting Windows devices here, so we'll turn that one on. Um, we don't want to do iOS or that one yet, so we'll save that. Um, we can enable App Sync for iOS devices if we want. Um, let's look at this one. Um, nope, we don't want to do any of that because we're not doing Android or iOS devices. Um, and we can save that. And obviously, we've already onboarded our devices, so sooner or later they will show in here. But we can then, um, since it's refreshed, but there's nothing showing yet, it might take a bit of time to do that. We can also then do 
um, policies as well. So if we go back to um, devices, we can also configure compliance policies um, to sort of protect our devices. And if we remember the, the PowerPoint deck kind of went into some of that. Um, so we could create a policy here um, around Windows 10. Um, and once we've configured this, let's just say we've configured this policy. We can then actually go into um, Active Directory. Um, so let's go into Active Directory. We can configure um, control access policies as well. So if we go to um, security, obviously this will be on trail when they get rid of all this stuff. Um, control access policies. Here we can create sort of new policies around device. So we can obviously do protect different apps. We have different conditions here. So this is where we can look at device platforms. So we can select our Windows device platform here. Or if we are on all devices, um, lock it down to locations, lock down certain apps, lock fill out certain devices for the conditional access policy. So this is how we can sort of protect um, the different players sort of on board in tune with uh, endpoint uh, defender for endpoint um, and then kind of the sort of integration you can do and how you can manage it, the different aspects you can manage um, so that is the end of learning path two it's been quite a, 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 I think it's quite an informative hopefully you found it informative as well uh, please do hit the like button give me a comment on how you find the series am i am i going too deep am i going deep enough how the how are the labs going do, do you like the demos do i do need feedback obviously to improve my content so hopefully you can, you can give me that feedback so thank you very much for watching. I've got all the, the, the useful links of the where the GitHub labs are, my socials, you know, drop me a follow, drop me a like as well, drop me a comment. Um, do not forget to subscribe. You know, the, the more support I have, the more content I'm going to do. So thank you for watching and I will see you in Learning Path 3. So until next time, goodbye.